How you doing everybody? Randy Richard in the shop. Uh, boy, I've been busy. <laughs> uh, we got our trailer uncovered from the winter and well, we had a little water damage uh, for, on our travel trailer. So uh, this last week has been teared apart. Uh, it was too much damage for me to really patch it up. So I decided to tear off the entire roof of the trailer. This is not a real big travel trailer. It's only a 16 footer. So we tore off the entire roof and it's an older trailer. It's all wood framed. Uh, so we tore off, like I said, tore off the entire roof, uh, all the plywood, everything. And I got the new plywood on already. Hopefully the new roofing material will come. I'm ready for the roofing material. Uh, we're putting TPO material on and it's actually kind of rainy today a little bit very light but still it's rainy so i had to tarp the trailer all that stuff anyway i thought i'd uh, do a little shop uh update type of thing it's a little bit of a filler video just so you know uh no machining in it uh but just a little update on some of the stuff of where i'm at on projects and a uh, little 3d printer update some dovetail cutter scribe update uh that sort of thing and uh closing lathe update and okay so uh ups just came and brought the roofing material so i'm all set for tomorrow and the next two days of getting everything put back together and re-roofing the trailer so uh let's uh run around the shop real quick so first off i got some mail this is uh from uh steve summers now steve summer has a Steve Summers has a channel and he has a huge shaper I and mean, has a nice monarch lathe that he's done some work on if you haven't checked out Steve uh, please uh, please do so I will put a link up to his his channel but he said he got he did he bought a bunch of machinist tools uh, I don't think it was an auction I think he bought them just from somebody he met anyway he had some Bochum boring bars in there in all these tools uh, so he uh, he sent them to me uh, very nice of Steve uh, so these are some really small ones this is uh, you know like a sixteenth uh, maybe an eighth of an inch in diameter there on this one it's a it's a triple lot B style now they still goes by the a, B, and C styles of barring bars. I think, the, well, these are all Bs. Uh, this is a, a aught or zero. And this was a double aught, I think. Yeah, double aught. And uh, this one was a one. A one and a two. Yep, a two and a three. Yeah. 3B, they're all B's. So the B is flat up for flat bottom holes um, or, or blind holes, which is very cool. And these still have coating uh, protection on them. They're in all in good shape. And uh, thank you, Steve, for sending these to me. Uh, now I have something from Triple Odd all the way up to eights. Uh, oh, I know I have that one that's a, what, a, a 12. So that's pretty cool having all these uh, cool little boring bars. And another viewer sent in uh, uh, Joe Mulroney. Uh, he, he's in Indiana, and he had he he had, was at an auction or and picked up a lot at a Hardage D9 tool post, but it's missing a couple parts. It's missing the wedge and the adjusting screw and the adjusting wedge and and such uh, so I have a couple of this style they're D5s I think uh, but they work the same way so I have something to come up with what's missing here and uh, I think I can make the parts I'll have to make them out some tool steel and probably heat treat them and stuff so thank you Joe Joe for sending these sending this in and uh, this is not the proper size to fit my stuff so i'll make a new t-nut for it also but thank you uh, joe for sending this in it's a nice little tool post and it'll work out just fine 
uh, on my Hardage lathe. Do appreciate that. Grade one here. I made some, uh, printed some uh, bearing mounts, put a couple ball bearings in, and I made a shaft. So we have real free rolling feed now for the f filament. This really helped a lot. I had a couple times where the filament got wrapped around and got stuck on things or and just wasn't feeding right. So this here has helped a tremendous amount of uh, free rolling uh, feed. Improvement number two. This bottom plate you see down here is what mounts to the carriage with the, with the roller wheels uh, like these. Well, I was trying to get a print off and I, it was plastic and I, bro I broke this, like just broke it. So this is trash. So what I did is I made a new one out of aluminum, about a 3 sixteenths of an inch thick. Well, yeah, about an eighth of an inch thick aluminum plate and redid the rollers so the rollers are all the same height and I'm able to get it to fit on the rail much better, much easier to level, much firmer base and uh, this is working, this made a tremendous improvement. Uh, it doesn't move around, it doesn't change in level. Uh, I've only set it once and I've printed a bunch of stuff now. Uh, probably got 30 hours of prints and I haven't even had to re-level it. So this it, stiffer base plate, big, big improvement. Really helped a lot. I've been printing some uh, boxes I designed. These have came out just superb. Just superb. I know it looks like a cylinder, huh? Quarter turn four lead thread I designed on there. And yeah, just quarter turn, or, le or actually less than a quarter turn, and it's tight. Just perfect fit. Scribe boxes. We got uh, one there, another one here. And printing very consistently on size and straight. Uh, just coming out great. Just coming out great. That's, a, that's one of everything. Uh, one of all of them there. And this one, I pushed the printer to the limit on the height. Uh, eight inch pin punch holder. So there's a, uh, just came out just great. Screw it on and it's tight. I mean, that's right off the printer, just, just perfect. I mean, it took me a couple tries uh, to get everything just so it does fit just right, but it still it came out in the end here, just, just, just wonderful. Working on maybe doing a logo thing or something here. It didn't adhere to the platen very good, but this one came out really good. Then I've been doing some 3D printing and designing and I came up with some round uh, boxes and the round boxes are pretty nice. They, they came out really actually very nice uh, and I did, created a four lead thread that I hand designed and I did all this infusion so it's a less than a quarter turn and I have a spot to mount my little coins I make in there uh, with a logo and these are for well this one I made for pin punches these are a set of Starrett uh, pin punches so this is a uh, pretty nice I can adjust the height and and the size of the holes to for that and uh, came out really nice boom and hardly just enough room in there for them and came out really very very happy with that and then uh, but these these other ones I made for uh, scribes so I have one of every one of uh, all the types I've made so far in this box uh, very few people have a steel blued one but uh, I only made about 10 of those but for the summer bash uh, I'm going to make a steel one for Stan and he's gonna blow it uh, so it's the same as the squares uh, in the raffle. So we'll have one of my my scribes in the raffle with uh, Stan Squares again. Yeah, but it will be a steel one. And uh, I haven't made it yet. I'm kind of, I might do something special with that. But anyway, that's what these boxes are for. 
So if you had a whole set of scribes, you could always probably con me out of a box. But these work out just, this is great for having a 3D printer for it, stuff like that. So what I did also is I, somebody was saying something about I should have a box for the dovetail cutters and, and uh, such. So I said something that would sit flat in a toolbox instead of something round like these. Uh, so I came up with something. So a nice little box. If you follow Instagram, I sent one of these to Mr. Pete uh, already for his dovetail cutters. And, uh, but it holds uh, two inserts, uh, extra screws, you know, one insert for each cutter. It holds each size of cutter, large and a small one. Custom box. Uh, the lid here, we have little hold downs for the inserts and, and the cutter so they can't, you know, fall out of their spots. And the logo, of course. So I, this is, there we go. This is what it looks like with the, everything in there. Box, cutters, insert, extra inserts. And that's what you get right there. Full set. The, somebody called it the deluxe set. A uh, few people have already <laughs> um, ordered these up like this. So um, I don't have a lot of boxes printed, but I, uh, I have a couple red ones right now, and I have a couple, a few dark green ones. Uh, it takes about oh, seven hours to print a box total. Uh, so it takes a little while. But anyway, they came out real. They came out good. They came out. They came out. Way better than I could, thought I could ever do it. Of course, it took me a little bit of time and practice to get the uh, right size to the, for the right fit and all that good stuff, but pretty happy with that. Pretty happy. So if you want a two-tail cutter, the deluxe set, right there. Came out, came out good. In my other video about the closing, I had a little bit of issue with a vibration a harmonic pattern on the cutting the piece and so I set up an indicator on here and checked the uh, run out of the spindle and at two and a half thousandths run out I went through the tightening procedure warm the lathe up just like the manual says warm the lathe up and then adjust it and I was able to adjust it to a half a thousandth run out and then this is a piece of 4140 in here the pre-hardened material I was cutting and boom, cut beautiful now. No problem at all. Uh, like I said, half a thousand run out and uh, happy with that. So this is my setup for uh, dovetail cutters. And this is the measuring stand that I made uh, to measure this stuff. I wanna thank everybody who chimed in on this from the previous video about different ideas on how to measure this. And uh, they were very helpful. And so I rethought some of this and and use some of their ideas actually. So this is what I do now. This is uh, this is 5.8, so this is just gonna be set in here. This is a broken carbide end mill, and I know exactly the diameter of this. It's 0 0.4997 or eight, uh, depending on how warm it is here. I'm able to put, I was able to put that in here. I measure on the top of it, and I came up with a setting on here where I, I really don't need to move this uh, basically at all anymore. I can just lock it. And there's enough stroke of this dial indicator to measure the amount I need to uh, measure uh, from the center line, which is not very much. For either size dovetail cutter, it doesn't matter whether it's a 5 8 one, shank one, or the half inch, or the smaller one. So I put it in here, measure that, know the diameter, I, know I can calculate the center. Now I, I developed a spreadsheet that will do all this math for me. And so when I, all I need to know is the diameter of the shank and the diameter of the head. And the spreadsheet did all of my math. So I, I made about 15 of these in a batch, uh, uh, eight small ones and four big ones, uh, something like that. No, that that's like 11. Well, I really did 15, but some of them are already done or shipped out. So uh, anyway, so I measured them all, put them all into the spreadsheet and calculated all the dimensions that need to be done 
or all the uh, offsets, I should say. So all I do, all I have to do now is come in here, find, set my dial on the on the indicator, the the gate, the face, right? Just loosen this. Set this to the uh, appropriate value that are, is calculated. Uh, it's, you know, it's probably going to be like 42 or 43 or something like that, thousands. And lock it down. And then when I go to measure over here I, I'm during milling, it will be a direct read of how much I have to take off to get to my, uh, to get to my center, uh, or my milling depth, the proper milling depth, I should say. And uh, it will read zero at that time. I don't know if everybody's understanding me what I'm saying here. So it's like that. So I calculate a value to set the face dial at. And it's usually around 41 or 2, somewhere in there, for a 5 eighths cutter. And so then when I measure, I might it might be only 20. It might be a 21 or something when I after I mill it. And that's how many thousandths I need to take off for my finished cut. And then I do my finished cut, and it should read zero. Anyway, it's a lot less uh, moving things, you might say. All I'm dealing with is setting a zero before I cut, and then I'm ready to set and measure, come in here after I cut. And uh, it's way faster, and it's way more accurate. So thank you again for everybody for chiming in about the ideas of how to make this simpler and better. And I think we've made it really better now it's all kind of dependent on the accuracy of the dial indicator and this is a really good one this is this was actually very accurate uh for what i've been doing so thank you guys and thanks for chiming in uh, comments really make a difference sometimes uh especially when you have a, a better idea this is the advertisement segment of the video <laughs> uh yeah so if you want that's dovetail cutters or scribe night of course you can get these individually, no problem. Or you can get the deluxe box with extra inserts. I sell everything individually also. Email me for details. Also, scribes. All the details are in the email of the scribes. If you bought one of everything, I'll give you a box. <laughs> How's that if you want a box? So, uh... We can discuss that <laughs> if, you, if somebody wants one of everything. There are a few people who do have one of everything. So, you know, stainless hex, brass hex. This one's not finished. This one's just a rough one. This one, I haven't finished this one up. Stainless round, brass round, and I still have a few copper rounds. I have everything in stock, uh, so, and uh, I'll be bringing uh, scribes and dovetail cutters uh, to the bash, is the plan. Uh, Stan's channel, check out Stan's channels for details on the bash. Uh, I think it's the 23rd of June. Uh, I'll be there. I do appreciate it, uh, your support. Uh, this is how I support my channel. I don't do Patreon uh, or anything like that. I this is this is what I do. Uh, this really helps support the channel a lot, and I do appreciate everybody's support that have bought products from me. Never had a bad email saying they hated the product, so they these are pretty nice. Uh, they and they work really well. Uh, check out other YouTubers' uh, channels. Uh, check out Mr. Pete. He does he did a really good uh, uh, video using my cutter on uh, uh, some stuff he made. Chris uh, Beglin, the old man shop also, and there's a few others. Uh, so thank you guys, and email me for details. Email me, email me, email me. Thanks again, you guys. Thanks for your support.